All right, Mr. Gonzalez, what I have you do is look over here and uh, blink for me. And really tight now with that left eye. Good, good, good. All right, what I want, okay, relax. How about smile for me? Good. Very good. Okay, relax. And how about raising your eyebrows for me? Excellent. That's perfect. Thank you for uh, helping us out. Yeah, not a problem. The difference between stroke and Bell's palsy is actually quite simple. When looking at a gentleman or anybody that comes in with a unilateral facial droop, I look at the forehead because the forehead almost tells us everything we need to know. I ask them to raise their eyes, smile, close their eyes, but the forehead is the main focus for me here. Of course, assuming there's no speech problems, arm or leg problems, uh, such as spasm or weakness, uh, we can rule out stroke for the most part. For, but from the neck up to discuss the differences between stroke and Bell's palsy, it's really the forehead. In Bell's palsy, because all of the nerves that innervate the muscles of the face that control forehead, eyes, smiling, frowning, and the neck, they are controlled by the facial nerve. So if you have a palsy of the facial nerve, or damage to the facial nerve, such as damage to the parotid gland on that side, or as in Bell's palsy from what's presumed to be a virus, all those muscles on the side of the face are now not going to work. However, this is where it gets tricky. Because in a stroke, the right side of the face, the right upper part of the face, just like uh, the left upper part of the face, the eyes and the forehead are innervated by both sides of the brain. So in this picture above, if you have a stroke on the left side of the brain, which then crosses over to the right side of the body, you still have innervation from the right side of the brain to control the upper part of the face. It's a little confusing, but study that picture, and now you will know the difference neurologically between a stroke and Bell's palsy and the upper part of the face.